welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are at the Thermal Grizzly booth and we have a man that needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway, Roman, aka Debauer. So thank you for being with us today and you're going to walk us through some products. But before we do, the Harbour Unbox Computex coverage is brought to you by MSI and Thermal Grizzly. Check out MSI's range of Z790 Max motherboards built for performance with robust VRM designs that are cooled with massive heat sinks. There's more than enough power delivery to fully support the latest 14th, 13th and 12th gen core series processors from Intel. Also enjoy ultra fast networking with up to 5.8 gigabits per second Wi-Fi 7 and support for PCIe 5.0 along with MSI's screwless M.2 Shield Froza for quick and easy installation of storage. And when it comes to the I.O., the Mac series is stacked. Learn more about MSI's new Z790 Mac series motherboards via the links in the video description. Also supporting our Computex trip is Thermal Grizzly and their new CryoSheet, a high performance graphene thermal pad that contains no liquid and therefore isn't subject to the kind of degradation seen with traditional thermal pastes, such as drying out for example. It offers outstanding thermal connectivity, simple installation and extreme longevity. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. One of my favorites, of course, the wire view. So we have the new, whoops, <laughs> I won't break it. It's very durable, um, the new wire view Pro. So you see some probes and things added to this model. So I think it's fair to say this is similar to the original model, just with some updated features and optimization. So what would you say is the most important or the, the first thing we yeah. should start on with this new one? I mean, as you noticed straight away, uh, we added temperature sensors mm -hmm. to the wire view. In total, four of them. Two of them you can see hanging off the wires and they were actually used for the prototyping phase because we started to notice with the regular wire view that it can get quite warm depending mm. on your circumstance, especially if you water cool a card and there is no direct airflow on a wire view. With just 450 watt load, just normal gaming scenario with a 4090, we sometimes saw temperatures above 90 degrees Celsius. So that's because the fans on the cooler aren't pushing air out of the heatsink and going over the you know, airflow over the connector to No cooler. more airflow and that's terrible because you have so many uh, contact pins, so much contact resistance and with that kind of current flowing to the cart, it will always heat up. Yeah, that, that, I mean that's yeah. remarkable information though that you need to yeah. at least air cool the power input to the card. And we're not, we're not talking about the, the power delivery, we're not talking about the power stages or any of that. Just the, the power connector gets yeah. so hot without airflow that it, it can run into problems. I mean, the electrical components on there, it's a small IC. I don't know what the power consumption is, but it's less than a watt. Yeah, so, so it's, it's not your stuff that's no, heating it up. it's not our stuff, it's, it's, yeah. the, it's just the, simply the transfer of connectors. Yes. So th this would occur on any 4090 that's drawing maximum power that doesn't have airflow from the air cooler. So if it's liquid cooled, um, sort of what you'd see with an AIO on a motherboard's VRM. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's surprised me, that's blown me away, that information. I thought that that yeah. would not be a problem. So, I, I mean, we know that the connectors have been melting, and I suppose that information makes sense, yeah. but still crazy stuff. Yeah, in stuff. the end, you know, we gained some experience now with the regular wire view, and what we figured out is that there is no way that we can keep the wire view from not failing. It's not realistic to promise that it will never fail because it's... Well, that's very honest. <laughs> and statistically, we're not, we're not making the connectors. Nobody of any of the supplier for adapters is making the connectors. And we were thinking of making a known connector, but the validation phase that goes with it um, takes a lot of time, money, and you might even run into more problems because this, even though it's not a con good connector in my opinion, it's still very, fairly well tested. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, millions of cards out there so we kind of know what's uh, working and what's not working and we know at least from our few thousand sales mm -hmm. that we had uh, three fail, failing cards uh, three, three failed yeah. connectors and that kind of gives you an indication of uh, what the uh, problem rate might be but instead of promising that it will never fail we will try that people will not ruin their cards so you have a good rma process yeah i mean um as I told you, I cannot promise you that it will not fail because it's not our connector standard. We're not responsible for that. But if anything goes wrong, uh, we will still be responsible for the RMA and always reach out to us. So far, I can tell you for the three affected customers, we offered them either to replace the card or to replace the connector. Wow. Luckily, they all re uh, agreed <laughs> that uh, I, I can replace the connector. Yep. Um, and they were, and were all three customers liquid cooling? Yes. Wow. So maybe try and keep some airflow over this thing if you can. 
That, that's that's pretty crazy information. But so you have four thermal probes. So these yeah. ones you can put on the graphics card or further down the cable or wherever you like. That's yeah. they, 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 You can put them wherever they'll reach essentially. Yeah. And then you have one at the base of this connector in here and one at the base of this connector. So you can monitor incoming and I suppose throughput you know, temperatures yeah, that's, essentially. That's exactly the, the general idea of the YOV Pro. So uh, it has four temperature sensors, these two and the two in the connectors. And the two in the connectors are measuring in a very similar way that uh, VRM is measured on, VRM temperature is measured on motherboards. And you can assign an alarm level to it. It will not automatically switch off. There is no like solid state relay or anything included, no MOSFETs that could control anything, but you get a visual and also audible alarm. Okay. So there is so, a, so there's an OLED panel on the front. <laughs> yeah, so you will have uh, a loud beeping noise. And what we saw during validation is that if you, if you have an air-cooled cart, this will typically run at about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, depending on your cart, configuration, airflow, whatever. If you run a water-cooled cart, exact same card, you just transform it to water cooling, it will probably increase to about 90 to 100 degrees wow. Celsius. Okay. That's just, you have to keep in mind, you have two connectors on here, mm -hmm. a ton of pins, a ton of contact resistance that will introduce the heat into the device mm -hmm. that will be for all 180 or 90 degree adapters. And what we want to do is that you plug it on mm -hmm. and you, in the first couple of hours, you see what is my normal go-to temperature. Yep. And then you can set an alarm maybe 10 or 20 degrees above that. Because if it's starting to fail, if something goes bad in the contact resistance, it will definitely heat up and you will notice that. So it's, it's a yeah. significant heat buildup to melt yes. the connector or cause damage. So much higher than the temperatures you're quoting. Yeah. It's sort of a runaway temperature. Exactly, and with that, uh, we at least want to let the user know before the problem happens. So you can inspect it and maybe replace this, reach out to us, whatever, and we will find a solution. Um, that's also why we have those two in different lengths, because in the validation process, we used this, uh, the shorter one and placed it directly underneath the connector that goes into the graphics card. Mm -hmm. That is something you can also do. That's why we left it on there uh, being short, because that's a little bit more accurate. We're talking about one to two degrees Celsius, so sure. it's not a big difference, but if you want to, apart from that, you can put it on your back plate of the, of the GPU or put it onto the wiring of the, the, the... Sort of the back of the input yes. connector, yep. Or the Airstream, put this into the GPU backplate, whatever, there are multiple options, you can leave them away if you want to. Uh, so it's pretty universal, and uh, just yeah, we're just trying to save some 4090s and maybe not have people burning down their house. Yeah, yeah well, I like the wire view, just because it's, cool, it, it's good for cable management, it's a neat little tool. Yeah. Uh, it gives you some cool readouts that you know, we've talked about previously. But it seems like if you're water cooling, it's almost a good safety feature to have, really, because it's monitoring that cable at all times. So you have to worry about whether it has or hasn't melted or failed. As you're saying, like the failure rate's certainly not high, uh, but it is more likely, or yeah, more likely to happen if you're liquid cooling. You, you, there's a yeah. risk there. Uh, but you would say if if you have a typical air cooled graphics card with this particular connector you haven't seen any failure rate yet, so it seems like you'd be unlikely to run into anything. Because we don't want to make it out too alarming that, you know... No. You... I don't want to, yeah, have more panic in the community or whatever, because statistically it's very unlikely that you're going to be affected. Uh, so that's one thing. It's very unlikely that you're going to be affected. But if something is wrong on the connector, could be either the card, could be the cable, could be, could be this, obviously. And if you're running water cooling, then you already have 50, 60 degree Celsius higher operating temperature. That is just beneficial for the failure. Um, so yeah, it's just- it Roughly, do you know how, sorry, um, how much high you have to go for the connectors to start being in danger territory of failing? That's one of the problems. We tried a lot to make it fail, but we couldn't. Uh, so we tried a lot of like not plugging it properly, messing around with the pins, like bending them so it's worse contact, heating it up with a heat gun during a load and all that kind of things. It's a um, weird one. I've had the same problem. We tried to yeah. you know, recreate that situation as well and couldn't. I've got multiple 49s that we've been running from day one with the original connector. Can't kill them. So it is a, yeah. it's an interesting yeah. situation. Uh, but, but basically, if you set the alarm 10, 20 degrees over, you have to go significantly over that temperature in all likelihood to melt the connectors and damage the cards. Yeah, I mean, we know that these types of plastic, they melt at a very high temperature. So at least I would say about 180, okay. uh, close to 200 degrees Celsius, that this type of plastic 
melts. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty um, of buffer there. Yeah. And since we did a lot of testing around how the temperature um, goes from the pins to the metal part down there, it is pretty accurate. At high temperature, it might be off by maybe four or five degrees Celsius. But if you set your alarm to, let's say, 110, it's more than safe. Yeah. And so what configurations are you offering with the pro version of the Wireview? Originally, we only had the 180 degree version in normal and reverse, depending on the orientation of the connector on the card. And we now also have 90 degrees. So 90 degrees also normal and reverse, depending okay. on the connector on the card. Yep. And then yeah. the original model still has the eight pin adapters and things like that as well. Yeah. And they're still on offer. I think there's yeah. possibly a model down there. Yeah, so we, we also thought about how we're going to yeah, keep processing with these, but we will just keep them the way they are because they're a little bit cheaper to make. Uh, there's a different IC on here that's a little bit more costly. Uh, you know, temperature sensors and all that adds to the price. So I think this is going to be about $10 more expensive. Okay, it's not too um, bad. Then the normal one. I wished uh, I could keep it at the same price, but it was not uh, really possible. Um, so if you want to go really cheap on, on the price and without the alarm function and stuff, then we still offer the normal wire view uh, and the Pro just has additional, additional functionality. I think $10 is reasonable for those additional features. Yeah. And just lastly, there is a USB connector potentially there for, I don't know how much you want to talk about the yeah, unreleased aspect of that software. I mean, a lot of people asked us about what the, the white connector on the back is, and that's for future software compatibility. So we're working on a, a main control unit for the Wireview that is going to be plugged into the 24-pin cable. Oh, yeah. OK. And that is going to be your operating system for Wireviews. Okay. And to that one, you can hook up these. Mm -hmm. And the main one then has software control where you can monitor a lot of other values, such as the temperatures and uh, uh, the current that is flowing through all your components. We will have long term, we will have the same kind of thing for EPS, mm -hmm. but without this. So it's just a, a small thing that you plug in between your power cable from the PSU and then to the EPS connector on the motherboard. Okay. And then it allows monitoring to the main uh, control center. So this is something you hope to bring to the product in the future? Uh, we already had it working like a year ago. <laughs> um, but software development is not that easy. We're working on this. It's an open secret that we're working uh, with this uh, with Elmore. Mm -hmm. um, he's a very talented, experienced engineer in this field. And I listen to his feedback. And only when he feels comfortable that uh, things are ready to go, we will do it. That's why we don't advertise it. I don't want to promise things. Yeah. It hopefully might be there in the future. We edit it because we want to have it. But we're not advertising it right now because I don't want to uh, disappoint people. Yeah, you don't want to set dates and things and then you're obligated to meet those dates. But that is a feature, I believe, that was on the original Wireview as well, yes. that connector. So yeah. that's, if you've bought a Wireview already, that may be something, or hopefully be something in the hopefully, yeah. <laughs> undetermined time in the yeah. future. A new thing we're also showing here is that we're launching um, a price performance oriented uh, thermal paste brand. Okay. So Polar Therm it's called, and we have X8 and X10. And those are going to be paced uh, for customers who want to just have nice and easy application, good performance, but still a very low price. So it's a more um, disposable thermal paste if you're doing a lot of testing, wiping it away, mounting a new yeah. cooler. and all that. That's good. It's good to have that option because obviously you don't want to do a lot of that with a very expensive paste there. Yeah. Sort of. Also, you mean the, the, the nature where our products come from is like Cryonaut, for example. This was a paste that was developed and made for liquid nitrogen overclocking. Luckily, it turned out to be also good for uh, ambient use, but it also has its downsides. Mm -hmm. Quite openly, I can say that, that long terms, this is not tuned for long-term stability, Cryonaut. Okay. Um, because of the particle shape and the particle size, it's not optimal for that. So if you just want to have a very stable use for a normal PC, you're usually better on just getting like Hydronaut, for example. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And same uh, with the Polar Therm uh, pastes, but they will be even cheaper. Excellent. Yeah. What's the main difference between the X8 and the X10? Um, it's uh, the particle size that's inside, mm -hmm. um, which makes the X10 a little bit more expensive in, in production uh, because the particles are a little bit smaller and um, increases the, it doesn't increase the, the thermal conductivity, but it allows, it allows to have a smaller um, gap between like CPU and cooler, and then it inc uh, increases performance. Ah, so, so the, yeah, okay, the, the, the thinner layer increases yeah. the performance, not the, necessarily the thermal. Yeah, that's always a, a funny part with the thermal conductivity. There's a lot of 
wild advertising values. But the key aspect about thermal paste is usually keep the gap as tiny as possible. That will have a better performance, even if the theoretical thermal conductivity, conductivity might be lower. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our look at the Wireview Pro and the new thermal paste from Thermal Grizzly at this year's show. Thank you for being with us once again. It's become a tradition now, I think. We'll have to uh, book you in for next year and see what you've got. I like Ho it. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be some uh, new updates and things like that that we can check out. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in some more content very soon.